Hello, this is Fred from uh, ProfilePro.com and uh, I'm at the Imperial in Quebec City. And uh, this is Marius Duda from Riverside. How are you doing, Marius? I'm doing very well, thank you very much. I had a good sleep tonight. You did? Yes, I, I, I did. Maybe because uh, yesterday there was a show in Montreal and it cost me lots of energy. So I had a, I had a good sleep. Good. I'm uh, following you guys on uh, social networks and uh, you guys had to brave some uh, crazy weather to, to get uh, to this point of your, uh, your that, tour. That is true, sir. <clears throat> what else can I tell you? We just decided to come back in winter and here we go. We have a winter. It's really uh, Polish weather because we got used to that kind of temperatures. However, if you start your tour in uh, Tampa, Florida, and you make a transition to um, much different clothes, then it, hurt, it hurts when you have to remind yourself that you're still in winter. You know, and I didn't know that there are some, uh, such, a, such a huge problems with the weather in California, so, but it started from that. Yeah. But here, it's just like a classic, nice, beautiful winter. It so, is. So yeah. it's not like crazy winter. No. Does it uh, affect your voice when you're traveling from like sunny and plus 22 degrees? To maybe, maybe, I don't know. But I got some virus as well uh, during this tour. However, I'm, I'm recovered already. Good, good, no, good it's, stuff. It's good. Uh, over the years, <laughs> like cities like Montreal, Quebec cities, they're part of your, I would say, regular visits uh, when touring North America. Uh, would you say or can we say that there is some kind of a love story between uh, Quebec and the uh, Riverside now? You know Canada is always very special for us because the audience are really into our music. I would say that even more than United, in the United States and we have always the biggest crowds here when we are on tour. And uh, yesterday we had a score in Montreal. Today I know that there will be over 500 people or even more. So it's great. So the love story means that if there are people who wants to listen to us, we want to come back to that kind of venues. You know, that's simple as that. Yeah. But it's always I have to mention that it's always an amazing feeling, especially for our band when the audience interacts with the band. You know, you guys are singing guitar solos, so it's really special. You can't find that on every American show or even in Europe. It's more in common with Latin America sometimes yeah. than, than, than with classic Europe countries. So that's why, I, now I get it. Now I know that's why lots of people just adore or record some DVDs or, or, or other shows here in Canada, mostly yeah. because of the audience. Good, good stuff. Uh, good stuff. Congratulations on the new album, ID Entity. Thank you. I've had to pr practice ID Entity. You can say identity as well. That's the good. Uh, well, it's you know it's 22 years of uh, music now, just about. Really? Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> How do you still get nervous, like anxious, before um, uh, releasing a new album? Oh yes, always, always. There is a pressure, but uh, huh, I even wrote the lyrics. I don't want to feel pressure um, on uh, the place where I belong. So mm -hmm. is that lyrics? So uh, I felt pressure at the beginning, but at the end, I just decided to skip this part. Maybe that's why I I wanted to record songs like Self Aware or Friend or Foe. I wouldn't do that like five years ago even. But now, I just said, okay, screw it. Let's do this. Yeah. You do it for yourself. I did it for a band, actually, you know? I really wanted to show Riverside right here, right now. Identity is not, Identity is not my another solo album, because Love You in the Time Machine, Wasteland, these albums were like my solo albums performed by a band. But now I was, thinking more about the band during uh, identity composing. Uh, 
and my main inspiration was to reflect the same emotions that we generate during our live performances yeah. and I believe that now people seeing us on this tour performing the, the, the compositions from the new album they starting to get it you know yeah. like okay now I get it because I know that a lot of people miss some kind of melancholy on the new album uh, ballads and everything but it's supposed to be like that we yeah. wanted to show our the best of our multiple colors that you can find on the album cover. So, so like I know you've you've talked about it already, and we've heard the album. But the concept, um, can you briefly describe it, and maybe you know towards uh, the uh, the pos positive vibe to it, uh, which is different than. Wasteland, Positive, for example. Well, Wasteland was like a tribute to Piotr Kuczynski. It was like an album, like an epitaph to him. Um, full of grief and, and, and crying. So, I just wanted to, to, to skip this part, you know, like mm -hmm. enough. Yeah. Enough. We, we, we cried enough through all these years. And now let's start a new chapter. The main inspiration was also the fact that we started the third decade of our career. So we had to mark this yeah. in a different way. That's why we, for instance, got rid of the logo from the cover, yeah. just to mark this. And to, we changed the artwork uh, guy also to mark this. And we wanted to slightly change the music as well. Oh, and by the, the way, the artwork is beautiful. It, thank you. Yeah. We salute you, Jarek Kubicki. Um, <laughs> and um, and uh, about the concept, well, you know, through all these years, lots of things going on, and I simply wanted to join this voice about liquid life that we live in right now. It's just like a continuation of Anna Domini High Definition, but 12 years after. Mm -hmm. 12. 13 years after. already already so yeah. you know we can talk about big tax and uh, all these problems connected with that we can talk about post-truth we can talk about um, genres and cages at the same time and but I think that the main thought is about the fact that these days you need to realize that the world has changed you can't just hide yourself behind it it's it's you need to embrace this all these changes learn how to live with them and accept something you know all these social movements that's appeared like me too or black lives matter within the last years changed the culture and changed our way of thinking and we can't ignore that so I just wanted to, to write it about some issues connected with that. And mark the fact that we are polarized and also mark the fact that there are places when we can be united. Mm -hmm. For instance, during our shows. And this is really beautiful in my opinion that we can unite people no matter how you know they feel about religion, I don't know, politics and some other things connected with sexuality, for instance. It doesn't matter, you know, we are all united. Yeah. That's the the final message on the album. Perfect. Beautiful. Thank you. Can you walk us through uh, what's a day like in the studio? I know there's there was two studios, right? For for this album? Yes. <clears throat> so what's a day like for Riverside in the studio? It depends, you know. It, uh, it was it was a pretty tight schedule this time because we just returned from um, the tour in US and Canada mm -hmm. last year and we had to go on tour in September so we had June July and August three months for recording the new album so I was a producer I had a notebook ahead of the schedules and we had days when we 
I had to spend this in the studio A at the same time simultaneously in the studio B. Here we recorded drums, Hammond organs, bass guitar, rhythmic guitars. Here we recorded, I don't know, additional solos or, or keyboards. I was no like one day like a in a Groundhog yeah. Dog movie that repeated itself. No, yeah. everything was constantly changing. And all the lyrics were written during that three months? Yes, but I had the, the main subject in my head. Okay. That was the fact that I just needed to fill my made up language with English letters. So, because the, all the melodies were already written. Okay. Yeah, it was tough, you know. People asked us why we changed the studio. That was also one of the reasons for our third decade. Like, let's do something different again. But there's also one fact. I really wanted to be inspired by our shows. Like, because I, I, I realized that what we present on the stage is really great. It shows Riverside the best aspects. Sometimes you can't find that on the album. Only when you see it's live, performing live, then you realize, okay, now I got it. So I wanted to, I wanted to create that kind of album as a producer together with the guys. And uh, our friends who did with us previous albums, they're not attending to the shows so much. So I really wanted to find a place with the, and work with the guys who are very involved in the live music and live performances. Yeah. So that's why we changed the studio. But we also stayed in the Saraco studio for some additional spaces, right? But that's the on, that's also the uh, that is also the reason why the, this album sounds like this. You know, there's not like many multiple layers everywhere. It sounds more like a live performance. So that was also. And, and these change, do they, um, do they give you like more freedom on stage? Definitely. I also took some rest from Riverside during the lockdown and pandemia. That's why I, I did Lunatic Solo, I did my solo yeah. electronic stuff. I want to take a break from Prague. And uh, yeah, that was a good, good, good decision because I, I missed those sounds, you know. Yeah. And we also returned to the rehearsal room. Uh, preparing something before entering the studio, so that was also a good idea to achieve the sound. Well, the the album is definitely a grower. Uh, I've read so many comments on people saying, well, my first listen, I liked it, and then I loved it, and then it's one of my, you know, favorite from the discography. How can you explain this, that it takes you know, that four or five listen to really, really enjoy it. And well, I'm not saying after one listen it's not it's no good. What I'm saying is it, it's a grower. Actually, I always try to select ideas from something that it's, I don't know, on my phone for many years. Also, I collect ideas that we once recorded on in our rehearsal rooms. And I'm just checking them, and I am also checking the status of the impact. Like, is it still works or no? Yeah, it's still working. So I'm, I'm trying to collect the things for the beginning that has some, you know, heritage, and, uh, and then you could hear that many, many times. And even after that, you're still enjoying that. It means that that, it, that will be more layers than just the first one. Like you listen to the song, but after that you just feel like it's flat, it's shallow. So I always try to choose the songs with the layers. And when you compose the songs, I also try to have time to, for this, you know, reverb. And um, that's, the, the, that's the, the, the thing, you know. I. I'm not a huge fan of, okay guys, we have like one month, let's compose something and whatever we, we will be composed, it will be on the album. With that kind of procedure, there is a danger like 50% will be great and 50% yeah. will be like, ah, they could do this more. Or easy di digested. Like, 
I did that. Quickly consumed. You know, I did that kind of experiment with my electronic music. Like lockdown spaces, claustrophobic universe, interior drawings. That was something like I was in the studio, okay, and I wanted to just put this stream of thoughts to the computer together with, with, with sound engineers, the guys in the studio. And, but I, I really wanted to do this differently than I always do with Lunatic Soul and Riverside. But with Riverside, I would never do that. I need some time for the song to be more established, yeah. you know. So. And so I always try to choose that kind of songs. Yeah. That they have uh, more deepness inside. Do you uh, read critiques? Sometimes, yes. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to see what's going on, you know, how people react. But uh, I don't mind. It's just like, okay, I, I've noticed that lots of people are following us anyway, so yeah. I've never heard the, the, the situation, like, I've never had this feeling like, you know, 80% that's like the bad critic. Yeah. No, it's mostly like there are some 10% of people who believe that we do this in a wrong way. Yeah. But I wrote a song, a, a lyrics about that, that kind of people in I'm done with you or in a, the place where I belong. So. Yeah. My message for them is now very clear. Uh, with eight albums, uh, how do you pick the songs that you're going to be playing live? I mean, it's you got a lot to choose from now. It, this is just like creating the playlist. You need your emotions should be ups and down. And uh, I'm always choosing the songs where we can have interaction with the audience because this is very really important for us. And I'm so happy that on this tour we finally found uh, um, the numbers, you know, the flow. Because at the very beginning we were experimenting with, okay, this song should be the first one, this song should be the last one. But uh, there was a moment when, uh, uh, when we felt like we we're just playing and people only listening and that's it. But I wanted to be, to take these people on the stage, yeah, you know, and now I think it's a, it's a good flow. We uh, we all know albums don't sell as much as they used to. I mean, physical copies of uh, albums, but uh, this time around, I mean, there is so many different uh, mixes and colors for vinyls and the regular CD and the you know like the deluxe edition. Uh, I mean, it, it's crazy because it doesn't sell that much but you guys seem to do quite well I mean selling physical albums well prog fans are collecting stuff yeah that's it they just collecting stuff and um, I'm and guilty they, I'm totally guilty uh, from time to time I'm collecting as well but when I did this and again this electronic stuff I did my very first art book in my career, you know, like uh, the, the Lockdown Trilogy from Marius mm -hmm. Duda has been released as a, as a CD art book. And I was really enjoying that and I said, okay, with the new Riverside, we need to do an art book as well. And uh, the label Inside Out said, yay, we always wanted to do that. At this point in uh, your career, do you feel like you have more liberty to create your, your own music without having to to please anybody or please a certain genre or like with you know Prague for example like you need to do you feel that you have more liberty now yes I felt that from the very beginning but I also n knew that I need to be in in a box but uh, then I realized that what's what's a problem for defining us it's also a virtue and it's pretty unique for Riverside I that's why I wanted to write an album about identity as well because this album is about Riverside it's not only about the issues that we have all over the world but it's when you when you take a look and when you filter the, these lyrics there's lots of about the band itself and the interaction between the band and the audience and the listeners yeah. 
the place where I belong, for instance, no one realized that we did that kind of song on purpose. This is not like we adore that kind of Prague. We just wanted to mark the place where I belong. It means that people see us as a classic Prague band. That's why we delivered classic Prague composition, you know, and we titled this The Place Where I Belong. It's not like uh, we knew that we need, okay, let's do some great solo at the end, you know, like Steve Hackett way of playing, whatever, for like two minutes. That was on purpose, not like we, we know that, we are self-aware, yeah. we're self-consciousness about this. And uh, so we did that and I, in the promo note, I wrote that Riverside is too heavy for classic art rock or classic prog rock and too light. But we play pop prog actually from the very beginning. Yeah. That's our style. And I see nothing wrong with this, you know. Yeah. We always try to experiment with pop, with uh, some longer tracks, a bit heavier moments, electronic stuff. So that's that's great thing, you know. For me, one of the best bands are these bands. When you take a, when when you take a look at their discography, you see all these transitions. Like sometimes you can be a fan of one band only because they have so many moods, so many different moods that you can choose like I don't know Queen or Genesis, right? That's great. So that's my these are my great examples yeah. of what we could yeah. do as well. That's why Riverside albums are different. Yeah. You can listen to Eye of the Soundscape when you want to f listen to electronic music. You can, if you want to feel more powerful, then you can listen to Anna Domini High Definition or even Identity now in the morning. If you feel miserable or sad, you can play Love You in the Time Machine. If you want to just like classic prog, you can play Second Life Syndrome, you know. I, I play uh, Love Fear in the Time Machine even when I'm happy. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looking back at over 20 years of career, uh, you know, as a band, are you where you hoped you would have been? Like, looking back, like when 22 years ago, is this where you wanted to be? In 2023? Um, I am happy. If from what I have achieved, it's okay, it's fine. I don't feel miserable, like, I don't know, Stephen Wilson in his, in his book, for instance. I am okay with my career. And um, uh, this is uh, something that I, maybe, I'm not sure if I wanted that. I wanted to be a musician from the very beginning, but I never wanted to be a musician who just plays the stadiums or mm -hmm. big arenas. I didn't, I didn't thought about it. I didn't think about it. Uh, <clears throat> I wanted to create music and uh, everything that I have, I, I see now, I don't know the amounts of people that's coming, that's because of my music. Mm. Probably if I did better music, we would have more crowds. So maybe my music is not good enough for bigger crowds, but it's sufficient, it's enough for me. This is what I, what, what I feel comfortable with. Yeah. And that is fine. And you made a career. And I made a career, you know. Mm -hmm. We're kind of a well-established band through all these 20 years. We're on this, I don't know, mid-level section, whatever that is, and it's fine, you know. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say, oh, no, if, if there will be some, I don't know, more popularity. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm good with that. My, my main goal always is to create music, you know. It, it's just like my therapy. Out of the four guys in the band, who is the funniest? <clears throat> we need to uh, define funniest because we have a slapstick and we have a sarcasm. <laughs> Name an album that you secretly like. Secretly with Monster. It's connected with Guilty Pleasure or what? I I have plenty of that. <laughs> the song from the distant earth by Mike Oldfield, for instance. Okay, nice. Uh, what country you haven't played 
but you you hope you can you can play it at some Aus point. Australia, New Zealand, New Zealand, and Japan. Oh, Japan. We're still waiting for that. Yeah. Do you recall what was the first poster you hung up on your uh, in your room when you were young? Sure. Europe or Shaking Stevens? No. Shaking Stevens, probably. I know. <laughs> uh, I know you play many instruments, but is there one that you just simply stay away from? That you stay away, like stay away that you don't. You Electric guitar. I'm I'm not a huge fan of uh, guitar solos. I find kind of boring, and that's why we uh, have a different style in in Riverside. And I never wanted to play that kind of instrument. Name one song that you wish you had written yourself. Could be for fame, for financial reasons. I should pick, I don't know, Yesterday, the Beatles. Oh. And I, wanted uh, to say, I wanted to say that I want to just mention any the Beatles song, but maybe one of these. Maybe. Yeah. And the last one for you, how many songs were originally written for ID Entity? Nine. Nine. So left out? Just just always the same amount that we can find on the album. We didn't have leftovers. OK. So there's no, uh, there's no B-sides. The no thing is that I never, we never composed something like, let's collect 15 songs, and then we will choose the best ones. No. Okay. That's always there's always a story and we're just filling the story with the with the songs. So that's it, you know. I know when we compose something, it's like this song will be in the middle section, this one will be the intro, this one will be the final one. Yeah. And then we're just filling the gaps. And the deadlines are cruel, so yeah. it's like, okay, we have it. Do we have something for the additional disc? No, let's do something very quickly. So to this time I did very, very quickly together with the guys these rock sessions. They have you on profile. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>